During the early 18th century BC, ancient Mesopotamia's city-states once again became fragmented after the Akkadian Empire disintegrated at the hands of the nomadic Gutian people from the Zagros Mountains. The small kingdom of Babylon rose to great prominence under the leadership of a cunning Amorite king named Hammurabi. A fearsome ruler and military commander, Hammurabi conquered all of Mesopotamia, with Babylon serving as the heart of his powerful new empire. From the time of its formation, six centuries earlier, Babylon had no official ruler until Hammurabi's father, Sinmubalit, declared himself king in 1812 BC. During his reign, Sinmubalit succeeded in a modest expansion of Babylon's territory by conquering the city-states of Kish, Sippar, and Borsippa, which laid the groundwork for his son and heir, Hammurabi, to effectively birth an empire. When his father became ill and abdicated in 1792 BC, Hammurabi ascended to the throne at the age of 18. During the first years of his reign, Hammurabi focused on vastly improving Babylon's infrastructure by overseeing the completion of his father's public projects and initiating many of his own. He heightened the city's walls for greater protection from enemies and added many new temples dedicated to Marduk, the Babylonian god of thunderstorms. Hammurabi issued a proclamation for giving all debt owed to the kingdom, making him extremely popular among his subjects. The first decade of his reign was relatively peaceful until the powerful kingdom of Elam invaded the Mesopotamian plain. Elam first conquered the city-state of Eshnunna and then set its sights on Babylon. In an attempt to consolidate power, Elam tried to spark a war between the kingdom of Lhasa and Babylon. Having uncovered Elam's plot, Hammurabi and the king of Lhasa, Rimsin, formed an alliance to hold the foreign invaders at bay. Together, they were able to repel the Elamite forces, but the limited number of soldiers that Rimsin committed to the effort enraged Hammurabi. In retaliation, Hammurabi persuaded several neighboring city-states and kingdoms to march on Lhasa. Their combined forces laid siege to the city for six months, ultimately leading to its downfall. Rimsin managed to escape, but was captured and executed shortly thereafter. Hammurabi, realizing that he was becoming much more powerful than his southern allies, decided to betray them and seize their lands to further expand his own empire. After laying waste to his former allies, Hammurabi had complete control of southern Mesopotamia. He was able to accomplish this great feat in coordination with Mari's assistance. Although Babylon had already expanded far beyond his father's wildest dreams, Hammurabi's lust for power only intensified with time. Mari's decision to send troops to aid Hammurabi in his conquest of southern Mesopotamia caused major unrest within the kingdom. Hammurabi took advantage of this situation by betraying Mari and marching north towards the weakened kingdom. He succeeded in annihilating Mari's capital and proceeded to execute its king. As a gesture of mercy, he allowed Mari and its northern cities to persist as small villages under his rule. Hammurabi's next plan was to invade the independent kingdom of Assyria, located to the north. The legendary king, Shamshi Adad, had recently died of old age, causing discontent throughout the kingdom and enabling Hammurabi to swiftly conquer Assyria's cities. This final conquest solidified his control over the entirety of Mesopotamia, but his rule over the far-reaching empire was short-lived, as a severe illness led to his death at the age of sixty in 1750 BC. Hammurabi's trademark military tactic was to build temporary dams in an enemy city's rivers in order to starve its population or drown them by releasing the water to create an unrelenting flood. This merciless maneuver proved to be a key factor behind the rapid expansion of his empire. 
Hammurabi's most celebrated accomplishment was the implementation of a code of 282 laws, referred to as the Code of Hammurabi. The laws were a compilation of revised Sumerian and Akkadian law codes. The Code of Hammurabi was inscribed in the Akkadian language using cuneiform script carved into a seven-foot stele made of black diorite. The top of the stele shows Hammurabi standing and receiving the laws from Shamash, the Babylonian god of justice. The code attempted to achieve equality through such laws as, if a man destroys the eye of another man, they shall destroy his eye. And if a man breaks another man's bone, his bone shall be broken. But fell far short of modern standards of equality due to its categorization of people into three distinct classes, property owners, free men, and slaves. Some examples of this injustice include if anyone steals cattle or sheep or a donkey or a pig or a goat, if it belonged to a god or to the court, the thief shall pay thirtyfold. If they belonged to a freedman of the king, he shall pay tenfold. If the thief has nothing with which to pay, he shall be put to death. And if a male slave says to his master, You are not my master, his master shall prove him to be his slave and shall cut off his ear. Some laws were particularly harsh towards women and required only accusations to be enforced such as, If a man's wife has the finger pointed at her on account of another but has not been caught lying with him, for her husband's sake she shall plunge into the sacred river. The Code of Hammurabi went on to influence several subsequent codes of law, most notably those found in the Book of the Covenant from the Hebrew Bible. The Babylonian Empire was short-lived because of Hammurabi's inability or perhaps disinterest in establishing a strong bureaucratic system. His successors were unable to sustain the massive empire, and it progressively crumbled over the next century until its complete collapse during the 16th century BC. Through ruthless determination, Hammurabi built a vast empire and successfully implemented one of the world's first systems of laws. Consider liking, subscribing, and clicking the bell icon below for more videos like this.